Let's take a look at the brush menu. Now, if you open up the brush menu, your first four options are CSG add, subtract, intersect, and deintersect. These are all commands that operate on the Red Builder brush. So what I'm going to do is here I am inside of a brand new additive level. In fact, if you want to follow along, you just go to File, New, choose Additive, and click OK. Now, what I'm going to do here is just with the basic Red Builder brush, which is a 256-unit cube, I'm just going to come over here to Brush and choose CSG Add. And what that just did is that added some geometry into our world in the shape of whatever the Red Builder brush happened to be. So if I take the Red Builder brush, and let's just grab this, say, in the top view, and I'll slide it off to the right, and we'll just kind of position our perspective camera accordingly. Now if I come back and do it again, we just go to brush, add, we add a second brush. That's all this is for. It's just going to take the Red Builder brush, use it as a template, and add that geometry into the world. Now conversely, the subtract option is going to do just the opposite. So let's position the Red Builder brush so it kind of intersects these two brushes. And then we'll just simply go to brush, CSG, subtract, and you see that chops that surface away. Now, in effect, what's happening, if I come over here to one of the side views, in fact, let's take a look here at the front view. We are actually creating different brushes. We have the Red Builder brush, here shown in red. In fact, let's make this view nice and big so everybody can see it. We have our Red Builder brush currently selected. We have two additive brushes. And we have our subtractive brush, which is being used to chop away the additive surface of our additive brushes. And you can see the result here inside Perspective. So pretty straightforward. It's just here to help you create BSP geometry for your levels. That's really the big reason it's here. This is what you will use to rough in the basic shapes of your level. You'll then put textures or materials on, on these surfaces and then decorate them with static meshes. Now there's a couple of other options for CSG. We have intersect and deintersect. And these are ways to change the shape of the Red Builder brush. So what I'm going to do is take the Red Builder brush and I'm going to place it so that it just kind of crosses over the corner of this additive brush here in our side view. And now I'll simply come over to view. I'm sorry, not view. Let's go to brush and just choose intersect. And wherever that brush intersected with the additive brush, all we get is that result. So it's kind of like a Boolean operation. Now if I reset that back just by left clicking on the cube button, we can try it again. Now this time, I'm just going to go over to brush and choose de-intersect and it grabs everything but the area where those two brushes were intersecting each other. It's just a way for you to get some custom BSP brush shapes in your Red Builder brush based on surrounding geometry. However, this can tend to create BSP geometry that's a little bit more complicated than what you want. As a general rule, you want these brushes to be as simple as you can possibly make them and then use things like static meshes to actually create any uh, decorative elements. Just food for thought. Now, moving along, let's go ahead and put that back to its cube by clicking on the cube button. And continuing down the brush menu, we have Add Special. This is going to open up a window, which is here kind of as a legacy issue. The big important options you have in here are, are your solidity options for solid brushes, semi-solid, and non-solid. A solid brush is just your basic brush. It means that as a player runs into it, it's going to stop the player. It's going to stop any projectiles that move through it. A semi-solid brush is going to do the same thing. However, it's not going to create any extra BSP cuts in your geometry. Now, that could sound a little bit confusing if you're not used to working with the editor. So I'm going to take just a moment and create a quick example. So I'm going to delete out these additive and subtractive brushes. And I'll click the Build Geometry for Current Level button. Or alternatively, I could come over to the Build menu, which we haven't really discussed just yet, and just click on Geometry for Current Level. Now, what that did, as well as bring up this kind of window here, was get rid of that extra geometry. So I'm just going to start kind of like a fresh start, just to demonstrate this. Let's right-click on our cube button. Now, that's located here on the left-hand side in our toolbox. You'll notice it's just a little cube icon. And we're going to set up some numbers here. I'm going to take X and set it to 1024. Press the down arrow key. We'll take Y and set that to 1024 as well. And then we'll take Z and we'll set this to 32. If I click Build and Close, you'll notice my Red Builder brush is now in the shape of a great big platform. Now let's go back up to the Brush menu and choose CSG Add. 
So that adds in this great big platform. As a matter of fact, if I wanted to, I could have a character running around on this. I just wouldn't be able to see much because there are currently no lights in the scene. Now, let's go back into the settings for our cube brush. I'm going to right-click on the cube button on the left-hand side of the screen one more time. And this time, we're going to set everything back to the way it was. So let's do 256, press the down arrow key, 256, and then 256 again. So that just creates a nice little box for us. So we'll close that. Now, I'm going to position the red builder brush so that it sits right on top of this platform using the orthographic view here. And there we go. We can take a look at the edges and see that they're touching each other exactly, which is just what we want. Now, I'm going to start off by setting our solidity to solid. And we'll go ahead and click OK. Actually, before I even do that... No, well, OK. No, I'm sorry. Let's just go ahead and do that. So I'll click OK. Now, I'm going to switch modes here in my view mode. Currently, I'm in unlit mode, which just allows me to see what's going on without having to create any lights. 